Good morning, just seeing if it's loud and clear for you. If you can let me know if it's loud and clear in Bristol from in Bristolian uh, for you in the live chat. If you can let me know in the chat, that'd be fantastic. And of course, if you're watching the recorded version, no need at all. So with that said, good morning. Welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. Right, I've got a shed load of topics and happy days. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, and I've got a wing in the way. Uh, yeah, come on, Summer, Wayne. Summer needs to be here. I'm desperately missing Summer. Right, uh, today's topics are uh, yesterday's POS. Uh, good news, good news as well. Uh, that is the topic. Uh, the run cam free uh, we'll be discussing as well. Uh, the Reptile S800 has got a new lid, and they've also skimped on the motor mounts as well, which is a bit sad. Uh, anyway, uh, Hobby King uh, batteries episode, the multi-star batteries are on sale. Uh, Hobby King have got a new model out, flown by, you won't believe this, the Stig! Really, being flown by the Stig. There's got to be some copyright claims there somewhere. Uh, and oh, a new wing! And please do not let me forget to check the Hobby King website just to see if it's still broken or not this morning. You know what I mean, EFX Extra Territory. Uh, so, right, let's go for this. Uh, actually, first of all, uh, good morning. Good morning to Matt, to Tyler, to Wayne, to Jeff, to Gordon, to Riff, to Jamie, to Lauren. Uh, who am I missing? Scott is in the house this morning. Jamie and Joanne, good morning. And obviously, if I've not said good morning to you, I do apologize. So you can say hello uh, in the live chat. And of course, if you're watching the recorded version, uh, don't forget to say hello in the comments section underneath this episode. So it is a bit blurry getting here this morning, but no way as cold as yesterday. So, uh, yesterday, <laughs> what an absolute POS. Uh, and those of you which joined in yesterday, obviously apologies uh, for the screw up. Uh, we ran into technical difficulties first thing uh, in the morning. Uh, and if you didn't join us for yesterday's episode, uh, that, that, oh no, that's the wrong, uh, that's the POS which started uh, the uh, conversation. Uh, and I, I, I was literally, I was sat there on the sofa looking at that box and wondering, would the box fly better than the model it contained. And Wayne, if you're watching this, uh, <laughs> no, I had no idea you did that. And I was actually really impressed with uh, uh, the wing which you made out of the box from the uh, Buffalo. <laughs> I'm still working through your episodes, fellow, and you know who you are. Uh, so uh, this is what we built, and uh, it still kind of looks like that uh, as well. Uh, so I, I, I looked at it, and the more I looked at it, the more it actually looked like a biplane. Uh, so that's what we've got, and it's got a CG uh, somewhere on the wing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we got it working in the end. It was uh, it was bemusing, and and I enjoyed it. I, I sincerely hope that you enjoyed it too. Uh, so yeah, it, it it was good fun. I, I will go and spend a maximum of an hour tarting her up, and uh, I will put an obscene amount of hot glue in it. Uh, I'm not going to go overboard or anything. I'm just going to put some uh, half-inch uh, plywood on the front and mount a great big motor with a huge propeller. Uh, in theory, it should fly. Uh, whether it flies or not is a whole different question. So that is the POS which we built yesterday live. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed that episode. I found it quite amusing, uh, to say the least. Uh, good morning, Andy. I can see a new name in there. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun, even with the screw up on the first attempt. So it is what it is. Uh, you've heard me say that saying before. Right, uh, topic number two is good news. Good news here somewhere or another. Uh, oh, no, there they are. I have, they arrived yesterday. Propellers. So that little X73S quadcopter, which Bang Good sent to for review remember the uh that was what i chucked it in the facebook group you guys said yeah let's go for that one uh so that's the one which has been received she is still sat right next to us 
on the desk and literally yesterday the propellers turned up so that we can give that one a whirl very very shortly and I can tell you it's crazy for a 1S quad it's nuts it kicks the FB90s but uh, and they really did load it up with beta flight as well. I had to go in and ch change a few settings. And uh, the cutest thing of it all is that it's running BHLE uh, ESCs, and you can hear it chirping. I don't know if you remember uh, me plugging it in. In fact, screw it. I'm, I'm going to do it again because it was just such the cutest little thing, right? I'm going to put this next to the microphone. Listen to this. Are right, you ready? It's worth it just for that. <laughs> oh, cute little thing. So, um, yeah, I'll give that a blast today. I did order three sets. Uh, so, yeah, happy days. So, if you do buy one of those uh, XM23S quads, uh, make sure you buy some propellers at the same time so you don't get caught out like I did because they are very, very brittle, uh, to say the least. Uh, and also, do remember, I will be giving that one away. Uh, I'll be taking all the servo horns, screws and bits and bobs, sticking it in a jam, jam jar and whoever gets closest wins and I will send it anywhere uh, in the world uh, as well. But I, <coughs> that is obviously assuming uh, that it's still in one piece by the time I finished with it. Um, yeah, rather curious, rather curious little thing. Uh, next topic. Now I don't have a tab open for this so I hope this link still works. And let me open this up on another window. Yeah, and I, I, I frankly don't get it. Now, Jeff, you, you do quite a bit with uh, run cam, and I don't get it. The run cam too, the format, it, <coughs> excuse me, is absolutely fantastic. It's perfect for my uses uh, and also for uh, the original, I, what I bought it was to go on a 250 quad, uh, and that's actually the second one of the orange ones I've had, and I've got silver one uh, down here. Um, but the bit which I just don't get, and I genuinely do not get, is the only bad thing which I can say about a Runcam 2 HD camera uh, is that the microphone is shit. That, that, that's all it is. It's terribly bad. Um... If we compare it to like the Flyerfly, which is, uh, you don't don't buy one of these, um, really don't buy one of these at all. Uh, the gyro mode is fantastic on it, but the screen's a weak point and the battery is absolutely crap. Um, but the microphone on it is amazeballs. Uh, the same for the Mo uh, Mini Mobius, uh, don't buy one of those, the battery's crap again, uh, and uh, it has serious software issues to say the least. Uh, but uh, the microphone is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I've got a Mobius, which was kicking around here again. The audio quality, absolutely fantastic. But the audio quality on the Runcam 2s, absolutely diabolical. I just don't get why they wouldn't have fixed the complete obvious, which is to improve the microphone uh, on the... Sorry, I've got goop glue all over my hands. Uh, why they wouldn't have fixed the microphone on the Runcam 2. That would have been the like ultimate upgrade rather than creating a cube to copy somebody else's idea. Uh, I just frankly don't get it. Um, the, the only thing which I could see in there uh, as a USP um, uh, for the Runcam 3 was that it was going to be cheaper than the GoPro, GoPro session. Well, that's, if you want to go down that street, you go down that street. Why don't you just improve what you've already got? And that, that's my honest thoughts. I want, I don't want a run cam 2 with a wider lens. Um, I'm really happy how it is. Uh, I just want a run cam with a decent microphone. That would be the ultimate HD uh, modeling camera for me. One of those which actually has a decent microphone on it. Because at the moment it's dire. Uh, so, I don't know. What's your thoughts? Let me know uh, in the chat. Uh, so, uh, run cam free for mini quad mounting, R2, uh, run cam 2 sucks for mini quads. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I, I, I don't fly mini quads, uh, and I can see what you mean, because on the little X frames with the top pieces, that that would be uh, fantastic on the top. But, can they bring out a run cam 2.1? 2.1! We'll call it a 4. There you go. Um, 
just sort the microphone out. That's all I want. Uh, and then I'd, yeah, I, I'd, I'd go and buy one. But the, the, new, the new one with a different lens, no point at all. I've got no inclination at all uh, to buy it because they haven't fixed the uh, elephant in the room. So I am a big Runcam fan. You, you've seen how many Runcam FPV cameras I've got. Uh, the Runcam 2 is, in my honest opinion, the best uh, HD camera out there. But the audio quality uh, is just horrific. Uh, and that's even with me coming back and having to tweak the audio in audacity just to try and get it somewhere near mildly near acceptable because uh, at the moment it is frankly not acceptable so don't get it there's a link to that in the uh, video well there will be in the video description notes if you want to go through and uh, read through that yeah my gear is optional <laughs> uh, yeah but i like to have a chat on the ground beforehand Hey, right, let's go and rag the nuts off it, or hold on to your seats and kiss your ass goodbye. And off we go. So, yeah, I didn't get that one at all. Now, the next topic is the run... No, Reptile S800. Uh, apparently, they are now shipping a version 2 of the kits out. Uh, they've done basically two things. Uh, cut some holes in the lid. Uh, and it's that lid which will fly off, so make sure you put a tape hinge on it uh, on the front uh, and also put a bit of tape on the back to stop the battery and ESC falling out because there's no point putting an ESC underneath because there's no room. Uh, and also they've been on skimps on the motor mounts as well. Uh, personally, I really did like those little red aluminium bars which you put on there just to step the motor back a bit. Uh, that, that, that just, it, it made the model quieter. Uh, it made the model faster because we had cleaner airflow over them uh, and I watched Jeff, Jeff did a uh, unboxing or overview to it yesterday uh, links to that is in the video description and also in the sh uh, little cards in the top left hand corner um, yeah I don't, I don't class that as an improvement to be brutally honest there are a couple of holes in the top where yes your battery and your ESC did get rather toasty um, but it wasn't meltdown temperatures uh, and I liked the little standoffs. Thank goodness that that mo the, my my model's gone off to a new home across the ridge, uh, and he's got the standoffs to go with his model. Uh, so yeah, I do feel it was better for having uh, the the standoffs on the back. So V2 has a positive couple of holes uh, in the top, and um, you they've skimped on some mounts on the back. Oh no, but. That aside, uh, I think Jeff's gone on the right route, which is that uh, is that it's a good wing for a quad quadcopter pilot to get into flying wings. And uh, some of you may have seen a, a video from me a couple of days back, and um, I, I do foresee flying wings being absolutely huge by the end uh, of the year. There, there is a lot of transition from quad flyers to flying wings uh, at the moment, and I'm sure that's just gonna um, just get bigger over the course of this year. Right, on to our next topic. Oh, uh, by the way, if you do want to find out anything more about the S800, uh, there is a playlist link in the video description for you. Uh, there are nine episodes for you uh, to get acquainted uh, with the Reptile S800, uh, and basically me just mucking around with it. I didn't want to do one of those boring reviews. Uh, and No, I'm sorry, no offense, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to do one of those like typical unboxings and then we'll all just go off and see it fly and it's pretty and everything like that. I wanted to go out and absolutely cane the bollocks off it uh, and that is exactly uh, what I did. Uh, I was due for a few strikes with Dead Man's Arm uh, and I hit it, uh, I think I hit it three times in the end and then James uh, gave me a dare flying through these two trees, uh, which I did uh, and then I was being... Um, What's the best word? Optimistic uh, to go through a little V gap like that and just completely, completely overcooked it and stuffed the model in the tree. And the irony is, she went on to fly another day. So there's plenty of episodes for you, which you can see of her flying around. The next topic which we got is Hobby King Multi Star batteries. Now, I really am a fan of these. I don't know if you saw the episode yesterday. Uh, I did an, uh, a video on these because they've gone on sale for three days. So it's the 26th today of January. 
Uh, they come off sale on the 28th. Uh, they are really, really good batteries and they were the tipping point for me yesterday. Uh, there, there has been quite a bit of discussion around the LIHB batteries, uh, as in the, the general feedback is don't use them for mini quads. They will uh, start to degrade after about 20 charges. Uh, personally, what I found uh, is that I'm not using them in high current applications. They've just basically been used in the Phantom uh, FX61, so and they've been in pairs anyway. Uh, and yeah, like the most amps we pull is about 18 amps out of it. So that spread over two battery packs in uh, parallel uh, is just not really tax the batteries at all. Uh, and that does mean that I've been flying around with 8,000 mini amperes of battery uh, juice uh, in them. Yeah, crazy stuff. And it's the 5200 4S packs. Uh, let me see if I can find the pack. And the links to the, the right uh, version is already in the video description for you. Uh, 4S multi-rep, that, that pack there. This pack, I, I, I genuinely do believe it is fantastic value for money. $21 for a pack like that. Uh, and unbelievably, they are still in the United Kingdom uh, in stock. I bought an extra one yesterday. That was the tipping point for me uh, to actually get an order in with Hobby King. So, uh, and a thank you to everybody who's been passing on their views about the multi-star batteries. Uh, my personal experience has been nothing short of fantastic. Uh, if you have a look, uh, the comment from Nige uh, or Nige uh, in the comments of yesterday's video on the on those batteries. Uh, he's had some of those for uh, almost two years now, uh, and they've performed consistently uh, over a long period of time. So, yeah, really, really good batteries. Good deal. $21. Bargain. That actually works out cheaper than what I paid for them last time. So that is classed as happy days. Mm. Next topic. And uh, I'm just pausing for a moment to look at your... Uh, comments. Uh, Jamie says the S800 has bigger magnets on the lids. Uh, I did, f the, the magnets were okay, but honestly, just a bit of like glass tape or a bit of sellotape to make an actual hinge. Uh, and also because I, I found that the lid just kept falling off. So I made a tape hinge uh, and then I put a bit of tape just to hold it down as well. Uh, it didn't make it far for anything on the flight line. It just went down, clunked down the tape stuck and off we went really straight forwards. Uh, yeah, Jeff says that I love the multi-star batteries. Yeah, I I love them. They're, they are absolutely fantastic. Obscene amounts of flight time. That's 5,200 milliampere hours uh, in what is a really light pack. I think, well, we'll see what they say for the weight in here if they've got it. Uh, there's not, yeah, 433 grams. Not a lot at all. Uh, and then if you can throw uh, the models which I use it in, uh, the Phantom FX61, the XUAV Clouds. Uh, I also use it in the Edge 540 as well. They are a perfect pack for the Edge 540. Uh, the 48 is going to have a pair of them in now, so I'm going to be flying around with 10,000 milliampers, 10,400 milliampers uh, in the uh, uh, 48 when she gets up and flying. And there is another model, a uh, C1 Chaser in there, the Mini Talon. Fantastic battery packs for those. Uh, really, really, really good. Um, Gordon says, the version of the S800 which I got was the V1 kit, but after map magnets seem to be a lot better. Um, happy days. Um, uh, Joanne says, how's the shelving coming on? Uh, got the hangers? No, no. Uh, the, the, there's a shelf there. I've, I've just been busy. I've genuinely just been busy with work and uh, I had a bit of a distraction yesterday as well, uh, so, hmm, yeah, curious, curious. Right, uh, moving on to the next topic which we've got, is Hobby King have a new model which has been released? Now, it is not the EFX Extra, so I am personally very disappointed, uh, but it is called uh, the Volt. Uh, Voltiger or something like that. It's a French word for altitude, I think. Uh, I think I got that right. Uh, it looks absolutely fantastic in the sky. Now, the bit which is doing that model its best justice is ironically not the model. If you are, um, the, the link to this video, that video is in the video description, but 
if you do go and watch it, the, 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 the model is being done justice by the pilot. That is absolutely no newbie uh, which is flying uh, that model at all. Uh, there's been a lot of hours uh, spent on uh, improving those stick skills uh, because uh, that was flown exceptionally well. Uh, and I'm not going to hit play, I'll have to leave it there for now. Uh, but as pointed out in the forums, it is being flown by the stick. Let's open that image up in the new tab. Look, it's the Stig. Who knew? The Stig has been featured by Hobby King in one of their new models. Here we go. Uh, so yeah, it does look like fun. Now there is a negative to this model and it's not actually model related because if you add that model to your shopping cart on Hobby King, it instantly goes to $20 shipping. It must be a big box, and the reason why it must be a big box is because it must be getting hit by an oversize uh, limitation to pass the force. Because uh, just here in the United Kingdom, uh, you can send pretty much anything up to 30 kilos uh, within all the standard postcodes uh, for the same price. Okay, uh, it, it would be the same price to the business. Uh, however, this box must be a pretty big box, and you must be getting hit with an oversize. Uh, uh, pricing on it because literally you've got some items in your cart and it says like six pound shipping or whatever it is uh, And then you add that to your cart and you're straight to 20 huh? So it must be I, I think that's what's causing it is not that Hobby King are actually skinning us for an extra 14 quid I think it's more of actually a case that it's actually quite an oversized box uh, and probably past the force have been kicking them in the nuts in the background uh, so that they will get charged an oversized fee on it, and uh, that's probably uh, the reason. Uh, so, yeah, Hobby King have a new model being flown by the Stig. So I reckon it may have been the Stig who was flying model airplanes in that video. Very, very curious uh, indeed. Uh, so, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. And, oh, we do need to go to, let me turn this off. So I'm just gonna, what was it? EF Extra into the uh, Hobby King. No, sorry, um, I'm afraid to say the Hobby King website is broken again today. And um, Hobby King, if you've got this going on, if that model's not being produced for another month, unfortunately, uh, you've got me typing in EFX Extra for the next month and then declaring the site is broken. Because uh, I really am looking forward to an EFX Extra. I need one. Uh, that looks absolutely bat poop crazy. Uh, straight on with FBV. Off we go. Brilliant. Uh, so I have sold sticker on my head. I cannot wait for an EFX Extra. Uh, and I want the red bottom. Because well, number one, it's red. Because uh, we all know that is the fastest colour uh, available. Uh, and it's got 69 written on it. So whoever did that has got right sense of humour. Uh, brilliant. Uh, <laughs> uh, Wayne is shouting boycott in the background uh, in the, the chat as well. Uh, it's it just broke. It's just got no results for the EFX Extra. And it's Tom's bloody fault for uh, doing uh, the couple of videos which he did, which we covered a few episodes ago. So uh, if you don't know the one which I'm talking about, just go across to uh, YouTube, type in EFX Extra. Uh, and you'll just see this chap uh, equally uh, blemished with hair uh, and uh, absolutely spanking it around. Beautiful model, beautiful model. Can't wait. And I was I, I was late last year. I, I only started in March, uh, flying in March 2016, and uh, a model like the EFX, uh, EFX would have been wholly inappropriate back then. Uh, but yeah, um, I really am looking forward to uh, the new version. Uh, mainly because it's got an FPV pod on the top and I just want to fly ridiculously fast. Brilliant. Brilliant. And the last topic for us today, uh, and I'm, I seem to be making good time, so I'm happy with this, uh, is a new flying wing. Now, I did buy this one out of my money uh, and I may have bought the other wing, which those guys do. Uh, and... Um, I, I, I was sat there yesterday looking at the parts, as you do, thinking, oh, it's only a small one. It won't take five minutes. Oh, what a load of tripe. Uh, here she is. 
And this, this office absolutely stinks of uh, goop glue this morning. So this is my new little baby. Uh, I think we should just caress her like this. Um, she is absolutely beautiful. Uh, and um, I am sincerely hope, wondering whether the 5S battery, which I've got lining up for this one, will smoke the uh, DYS SE2205 2300 uh, KV motor on the back or not. Uh, I did have some horrible visions when I first started building her, and uh, I just need to rock her because uh, she's going to have a hard life. Uh, and um, <laughs> yeah, I did, I, I'll be frankly honest with you, uh, I was a bit concerned about the uh, floppiness of the wings. Now, I, I, I have tackled uh, that head on. Now, I, I was a bit concerned because I had horrible flashbacks of uh, the uh, rainbow wing, remember the, the V1, which we had, which was desperately lacking carbon fiber. Uh, and um, uh, th th this little uh, wing is now classed as wedding tackle grade. Uh, I have put far too much uh, carbon fiber in it. So uh, I, I will find a pen a moment and just point out the carbon fiber points on this one because I think I have, have more mass and weight in here in carbon fiber than what we do in have in foam. So we have carbon fiber, carbon fiber, carbon fiber, oh, more carbon fiber on the top. Now, if, if I turn this up the other way, uh, you might be able to see in the light how much carbon fiber extra carbon fiber I've been putting her. So if I start at the bottom, we have one piece of carbon fiber, two pieces of carbon fiber. We have a long strip of carbon fiber running through there. Uh, and then we have another piece of carbon fiber here. And then we have another long piece of carbon fiber. And that's the uh, five millimeter uh, carbon fiber by one mil strip, which has gone on the leading edge. The rest was either, either four mil or three mil. Uh, carbon fiber and uh, that really has stiffened this oops, sorry uh, that really has stiffened this model up uh, a, a fair proportion because it did have a quite a bit of torsional roll in it uh, which I didn't like because it's very weak here in the middle uh, also I have created a little plywood um, little insert in there for the battery to sit in. Again, I felt the foam was a bit weak. And again, if uh, on an unscheduled landing, uh, it wouldn't hold up. So I have gone on, I have uh, buried the servos in and I, just want, I, I spent, look, can you see the servo protruding there? Or there? The only bit which I've got protruding right now is either the servo horns or that tiny little wire there. Now, uh, I, I will let that wire off because it's having to jump over a piece of carbon fiber. Uh, unfortunately, I suddenly put too much carbon fiber in there. And then if I just poke that down a touch, the uh, receiver, completely flat in there, perfectly recessed. And then what I've done with my antennas is run them out on the wing. Uh, and we've got one going out verti uh, straight out, and then we've got another one going up like that as well. Uh, I have also improved the motor mount at the back. Now, uh, what I did originally, let me just go and grab a photograph of this because I think it's really, really important to share my approach uh, to this model, uh, which is that I pinned her up. Now, what I mean by that, I need to turn my, get my head out of the way uh, there. What I did is that I laid out all of the components on the wing before even putting a knife uh, or any glue anywhere near it, uh, and that soon that then led me to find that the C of G uh, needed some desperate action on there. So that's why I've got the servos mounted so far back in the wing. Uh, that's why I've got the motor back here being buffeted, uh, buffered out by two pieces of plywood, uh, just so that I could hit the 10 centimeter CG point on her. Uh, now, the one part which I've not put in yet is the video transmitter. Uh, I will do that last. Uh, and the reason why I will do that last is because that's the, like, the last major weighty component which will allow me to hit CG. Uh, so I will now go on today, put the motor on the back, uh, put the leads around. I won't be using uh, uh, what you may call it's on here, uh, bullet connectors. I will solder straight onto the ESC wires. Uh, as well, and I'm going for like the cleanest build which I can, uh, and then I'll get loaded, get her all loaded up and prepared up, 
Uh, and then once she's, well, that will only take like five minutes or so, because it only needs to be roughly correct. Uh, then I'll get the video transmitter in, head for perfect CG on her. Uh, and then uh, she goes to paint and laminate today. So we will be seeing that one. We won't see it flying on the weekend because unfortunately I've seen the weather reports for here in the United Kingdom and it doesn't look good. Oh, and I've also cut out a nice little gap here as well. So uh, the motor has come out a bit. It may go out a little bit further as well. Uh, you'll see my three steps. The, the only provided one piece, yeah, that top piece there. I've made a buffer of uh, another spacer and another bigger spacer on the back as well. So uh, this is my new uh, baby wing. Um, <clears throat> Uh, she came to me with a label called Apex. Um, I don't know if I'm going to call her an Apex or not. Um, everybody else does theirs in yellow. I don't know if I'm going to do yellow. In fact, if I'm going to do yellow, I think we're going to have a matte yellow. And I'll show you what kind of matte yellow I'm thinking. That kind of yellow. Look how bright that is. So I've already got a design in my head for doing it. It's going to be an absolute pain in the ass to do. But it looks, it should look really, really cool once I've finished it. So I've already got a design in my head. I do need to like mock up a design today uh, and see how we get on with it. Um, it should, oh, it should be good fun. Uh, Peter says, have you flown the box yet? Yeah, no, the box really ha it ha still has another model in it. Sorry, Peter. Um, what was there something about Bruce, Bruce's building one? Uh, where does the pulse jet go? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I think you, the pulse jet would be longer than the model itself. It's, uh, not particularly big. And, um, yeah, the, I, I wasn't happy with the center section at all. It all just felt really flimsy. Uh, and it's still, I might even stick another bit of carbon fiber uh, up underneath just to just try and stiffen it up. There's just, so there's, because so much foam has been taken away in the sensor section to, to be able to get a decent sized battery in her, um, that has, uh, I feel personally, uh, severely compromised the structural integrity of the model. So that's why I've gone so overboard uh, on the carbon fiber in this one. Uh, because I genuinely feel that it needs the extra carbon fibre in her, uh, and kind of impressed, uh, kind of impressed. I will, thanks to everybody's peer pressure in the Facebook group yesterday, I was going to run sensibly an 1806 uh, little uh, quad motor on the back with a little 6x30 prop and just have it for mucking around with. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks gents and ladies. Um, the uh, peer pressure got me into running it on 4S with uh, an SE2205 and like I said, I have been eyeing up the uh, 5S batteries which I've got here which fit perfectly uh, in there. Um, so yeah, she is going to be a bit of a screamer. Oh well, it's where it is. Good fun. Good fun. Yeah, yeah I will laminate the wing. Uh, she will go to... <laughs> So crash a lot, Matt. Yellow Apex Extra. That's not a bad name. I really, that's a really cool name. Apex Extra. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's been amusing. Right. Um, yeah, we'll hold off final judgment until she flies. I've got a funny feeling it's going to be bonkers. Uh, the little fins uh, on either side, uh, the vertical stabilizers aren't particularly big. Uh, so, and the wing cord. Also, let me just make this point. Look how thick that wing cord is. This is going to, actually well, she is, because we need to we need to get that correct, is that most models are girls. Um, uh, and anyway, uh, my point is, is that, look at that bit there, Ben. That's better. Uh, is that the wing, look how thick the wing cord is. It's exceptionally thin. Uh, so that does lend ourselves to a super uh, fast model so yeah she is going to be fast and i'm pretty sure she'll probably be a bit of a screamer as well right uh raymond says what paint do you use on epo and epp uh raymond really good question a, a, a basically acrylic based paint so 
Uh, it will normally say set on the can somewhere. Let's have a quick look. It will say something about being it being acrylic, which for the life of me I can't see on it, but I know it works fine on EPP because uh, I've sprayed other models with it. Uh, the other one, Raymond, if you are not sure, just test it out on a little like scrap piece uh, and just make sure it doesn't melt the actual foam itself. So uh, generally speaking, uh, acrylic based paint because pl that's plastic and plastic. So that's normally fine. The, uh, the other ones, which uh, is it cellulose, the, the other, the older paints, I say older, um, yeah, the other types of paints can melt EPP and plastic. So do go careful with those. Um, yeah, great lift on that. Uh, to be frankly honest, Wayne, I don't think it's going to worry about length, uh, lift because she will have so much speed on her. Uh, it will be unreal. Absolutely uh, crazy. Uh, Peter, how much was it? I don't genuinely remember. 60 U US dollars. There you go. 60 dollars USD. Uh, and remember, I paid for that one out of my own cash. Uh, I would class that. If any of you are thinking about uh, this wing, uh, I would, number one, seriously go and buy a shed load of carbon fiber. You will need it. Uh, you will need uh, three millimeter by one millimeter and four or five millimeter by one millimeter strip. Uh, and I may even add some more in this one just to ensure rigidity. This whole hat, the top for the battery, really has compromised uh, the, the fuselage. I, this is my honest personal opinion. Um, but with, with that like negative out of the way, the extra carbon fiber make the wings stiffer. It will make for a more responsive model in the sky. Uh, and like I said, I'll hold final judgment until we get her up there. So uh, she, like I said, uh, I'll put one more bit of carbon fiber in the bottom of her this morning. No, I'll take that back. I've just seen a space with two. I think I'll put another one all the way across that big gap there. And I think I'll put another little bit at the front. Yes, and I put too much carbon fiber in there. Because if I smash it up and it's beyond repair, I can always take it back out again. It's not like it's going to rot, is it? Uh, and then anyway, uh, today she will get pinned up to make sure the CG is correct. A hold for the video transmitter. Uh, and then we go into paint. And I do have a design uh, lined up for her it's just i don't know what it's going to turn out like i just hope it turns out really really cool so yeah yeah it's it's not a lot of, well it's actually very very nice so i'm just going to check, thinking about wayne's comments there in the background it's very very well finished uh very well finished uh epo i didn't have to scrap or sand any of it in there it has been a straightforward build so so far kind of like it but like I said, it, it has to perform in the sky. Um, and with that on that little SC2205 with 4S on the back of it, it's definitely going to go and perform. Uh, that's for sure. So, yeah, the links to those are in the video description. No idea what they're going to end up like. So with that said, let's go back and recap uh, today's RC Coffee Chat. Yesterday, we had a live event where we built a hopefully not a POS out of the box which contained a POS. Uh, we had some good news, we have some propellers for the, I'm not trying to look, X73S 1S racing quadcopter. Remember that one will be given away as a freebie in a competition at a later date. So I will be taking that one for a spank around later this morning. Uh, there is a new run cam free on the way. Personally speaking, as a um, plank flyer, you know, model airplanes rather than the knives quad flyer, uh, is that I don't want a brick on my model. I'd like, I genuinely would like the microphone to be fixed on the run cam too. I would buy one immediately if you sorted that out. Don't change anything else about the format. The lens, I don't care for a different lens. Uh, the, the batteries are all right, um, but it's the microphone. That is the flaw in the run cam too. Uh, fantastic low light level um, abilities on it. It kicks the butt over everything else which I've used, but the microphone is just shit. Please fix it. And I'd buy one immediately. Uh, so there is a run cam free coming out because they copied GoPro. There you go, fantastic news. 
Uh, the S800 has come out with some adaptations, some holes in the lid, and they've skimped on the little red uh, mountain brackets on the back. Bit unfortunate on that one. I do feel that it was better for being the motor being mounted out further. Yes, that means that, um, no, I didn't have to run any lead in mine at all. So yeah, look out for that. Uh, next topic is that we, oh, the next topic which we covered was the multi-star batteries. There is a video out on my YouTube channel for that one. If you haven't seen that yet, uh, underneath this video, click on Matthew Ogborn, my name, uh, and then you'll see it in the last couple of episodes. And if it's not there, just press show more and you should be able to find it. Hobby King have a new model out, uh, which is being flown by the stick. Really? He's in the cockpit, ragging the nuts off it. Brilliant. Uh, but do watch out for the shipping on that model. It must be an oversized box because that postage just goes bang straight up uh, the second you add it to your car. And I think there was a couple of you which noticed that uh, in the Facebook group yesterday. Uh, we checked the Hobby King website, which is unfortunately still broken. There is no EFX Extra available on the site. Sorry, Hobby King, your website's broken. Uh, the And the last topic is we have a new baby in the house. And it is a new baby, so I, I think we should uh, just rock her like this because when she grows up into a air munching, rag the nuts off standard model, she is going to have a rather hard life. So this is the new wing. I kind of like it, to be honest. I put way too much carbon fibre in it, but it should be bloody good fun. So with that said, it's time for me to go. Uh, Thomas says, I can await the new run cam. Brilliant. It's just not suitable for me. Uh, and again, if you've got, like Jeff mentioned, the uh, quads, it probably is going to be a fantastic camera for them. I'd just like the run cam 2 to have a fixed microphone in it. It would be a much better camera for that. From my experience, and as you know, I've been through three of them. And there's two here, and the other one got mulched up in a big grass cutter. And when I broke it, I went and bought an, uh, another one immediately. So it was my previous orange one. Um, sad times, sad times. So with that said, for myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for joining me for today's RC Coffee Chat. If you are not already subscribed, we run an RC Coffee Chat every single morning underneath this video where it says Matthew Walkborn, press the red button which says subscribe. Next to that, there is a little bell icon. Click on that and you will be notified the second the next episode has been published. Uh, and of course, if you would like to join in with the chat after the RC Coffee Chats, we have like an after party going on uh, over on the Facebooks of the internet called uh, Facebook. Uh, and the link to the Facebook group is in the video description. There are now over, well, there is now 480 members uh, in the group. 480 other cool pilots just like you. If you've got a question, ask it in the Facebook group. Uh, there is just such an overwhelming wealth of knowledge and experience available to not only you, but also shamelessly for me as well. I get stuck at times, so I find the Facebook group absolutely fantastic. And, you, and I'll scroll down. Oh, actually, I'll, let me go into the discussion. You can see what's in the Facebook group. So there's me saying a personal welcome to you. Uh, which I do need, do need to do another one today, I believe, uh, on there. Uh, we've got Rudd's chatting about uh, our new wing. What else have we got going on here? There's me putting the link in there for today's RC Coffee Chat as well. Uh, the other one, Richard, in there chatting about... Oh, yeah. <laughs> have you seen that? If you haven't seen that, go watch that. I find that kind of amusing. Uh, there was the video about the multi-star batteries, and I will post all episodes, generally speaking, uh, in the Facebook group before they actually go live. Uh, on uh, onto YouTube. Uh, there was Carl letting us know, big hat tip to Carl about the li LiPo battery cell. Uh, and there's me doing some 3D printing. There's those little things which I printed off, cleaned them up. There to go on the underneath of the, uh, what should we call it, the clouds, uh, because the servos keep picking up crap when I land it. So uh, they took about two hours to print. Uh, and I know you can buy them for like three quid, but I saw the files and wanted to see what they were like, so I printed them off. They look pretty tough, so they're going to go on the model. Um, yeah, and you can find out about st stuff like that and more. So on that note, for myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for joining me 
for today's RC coffee chat. Cheerios!